Hi, this is Mark Spencer from Ripple Training, and this is a quick video on how to use callouts. Once you've installed the most recent version of FX Factory, callouts will appear automatically in Final Cut Pro 10 in the Titles Browser. You can click the T to open the Titles Browser and look for the category Ripple Callouts. You can apply callouts to either still images or video. To apply callouts to a still image, one way is to simply skim over the still image, you don't even need to select it, and just tap the X key which will set a range for the entire clip. If you wanted a shorter range, you could skim to the in point that you want and tap I, and skim to the out point that you want and tap O. I'm gonna go ahead and tap X again. Now, just select the callout that you want and press the letter Q to connect the callout to the clip. To add a callout to a video, it's often useful to create a freeze frame. To do so, simply skim to the frame where you want the freeze frame to start, let's say right about here, select the clip, and then in the retiming menu, choose hold or press shift H. This action will create a hold frame, which you can then trim by dragging the right edge. And then if you select it, you'll get a range exactly matching that hold frame. Now select the callout that you want to use and press the letter Q to connect it to that range. Once you've applied a callout, click on it to select it. If you're still in demo mode, three buttons will appear along the bottom of the viewer. The first one will launch FX Factory, where you can click Buy Now to purchase the callouts or enter the registration code if you already have one. The second button will take you to the tutorial you're watching right now. The third button, Help, is context sensitive and changes depending on which callout you've selected. For each callout, the Help button will bring up a PDF in Apple's preview application this PDF will give you tips on how to use each of the callouts. It will give you a general description, a list of the on-screen controls, a description of the controls in the inspector, and a couple of ideas on how to use the callout. Each of the 10 callouts includes a set of on-screen controls to allow you to manipulate the callout directly in the viewer. This particular callout, Bubbles, has two different on-screen controls. This one in the center allows you to reposition the entire callout and to change its rotation. And then this on-screen control right here lets you control the extension of the little extender that pops out. This callout includes several on-screen controls. There's usually one on-screen control, this one in this case, that lets you manipulate the entire callout and move it all as a unit. Then the other parts you can figure out by dragging on them. For instance, often if there's text, there's an on-screen control that lets you manipulate the position and the rotation of the text without needing to go into text entry mode. Once you do double-click on the text to change the text, there is a control there that you can use to move the text, but I suggest that you don't so that the on-screen control remains close to the text when you exit text entry mode by hitting the escape key. The other on-screen controls are generally pretty clear what they do, and just dragging on them will make it obvious what they do. For more detailed control of a callout, go to the inspector. Let's hit the I here to open the inspector. And then we'll go to the title inspector. The title pane contains all the parameters that are specific to each callout. For example, many callouts include a grid option at the very bottom. If you enable it, you can use it to more precisely align the elements in your composition. In addition, at the top of every callout are some animation parameters. Every callout is animated by default. You can choose to turn that animation off for either the incoming animation or the outgoing animation by clicking either of these checkboxes. Let's turn off the outgoing animation. Every on screen control also contains a parameter in the inspector. For example, if we move the entire callout here by dragging the center on-screen control, we can see the position values change in the inspector. Or if we drag on the extender on-screen control, we can see the extender position values change in the inspector. Generally, values in the inspector are keyframable so you can make them change over time. The exception is any on-screen controls that control control points from motion. Because of the way motion worked with Final Cut Pro, those on-screen controls are not keyframable. 
Any parameter that is not keyframable will show up with a little underscore before its name. So for example, this extender position has an underscore, so it is not keyframable. Here's an example using the magnify callout. It has an on-screen control that allows you to change the position of the magnification section and also the rotation. Rotation doesn't make much sense with this example, but if we change the magnifier from a colored circle to a magnifying glass, we then can see that rotation will allow us to reposition the handle. Now we can keyframe this in the inspector. Let's place the playhead where we want the animation to start, and we'll set a keyframe for the position of the callout. Let's also set a keyframe for rotation. I'll move forward in time, and then I'll drag the on-screen control to move the magnification area over, and I'll rotate the magnifying glass. Now if I play that back, we have an animation. There are many other parameters that you can adjust for all of these callouts. For example, for this magnifying glass, we can adjust the scale of the magnifier itself. We can adjust the scale of magnification within the magnifying glass. As you saw, we can change the different type of magnifiers and many other options. If you've made a lot of changes to a callout and you're not happy with them, you can always reset the callout by clicking on this hooked arrow at the top right corner of the inspector. Note that sometimes when you hook the hooked arrow, you may need to move one of the on-screen controls to have it update completely. Also, hitting the hooked arrow will not change the text that you've entered into your callout and will not change any checkboxes that you've enabled. When you trim the duration of a callout in your project, it does not change the timing of the incoming or outgoing animation. However, for a few callouts, including connect the dots, which we're using here, you can change the duration of the animation. Let's extend this back out for the full duration and play it back. To change the duration of this animation in the inspector, there's an animation speed pop-up menu. You can choose slow, medium, or fast. Let's try slow. And let's try fast. Many of the callouts that include a line allow you to change how that line appears. By default, it will be solid, but in the inspector, you'll have options for solid, dots, or dashes. When you change the line to dots or dashes, you may notice that it doesn't update when you move the on-screen controls. In order for it to update, you'll need to move the playhead in the project. Most of the callouts also have indent and extrude options. Just scroll down in the inspector, enable indent, and adjust the indent softness to change the look of the indent. You can also try extrude, where you have an extrusion angle and extrusion distance. You can also try using them both together for a different look. Many of the callouts also include the option of using a drop zone. Here we have the shapes callout applied to this clip. In the inspector, we've set it to a rectangle as opposed to a circle and adjusted the rectangle roundness. If we scroll down, there's a drop zone. There'll also be a checkbox to use the drop zone. Let's check it and then reduce the fill opacity so that we can see the drop zone behind the fill. Let's also turn off the text so we don't see the text in the way of the drop zone. Now to use a drop zone, just click on the well. Then in the event browser, click on the clip or the graphic that you want to use in that drop zone. And then select apply clip. Now to adjust the content of the drop zone, you can either do so in the inspector underneath the drop zone well where we have scale control as well as panning in X and Y. Or we can double click directly on the drop zone and manipulate it both position and scale directly in the viewer. If you do double click directly in the viewer to adjust the drop zone in order to exit, you want to click somewhere outside the title 
in the project. Several of the callouts also have a corner pinning option. Here I'm using the pointer callout where I've changed the text to say path of travel. I've also turned on extrude, changed the color of the arrow, and adjusted a few other parameters. At the bottom of the inspector are the four corner properties. If you click the four corner checkbox, it will enable those properties. And you can see I've already made some adjustments. It can be a little tricky to figure out exactly how to adjust each of these parameters, but what I suggest you do is do not make changes to the overall on-screen controls, but rather drag in these value fields to figure out how you want to corner pin the different corners of your callout into the scene. That's it for the short overview of how to use callouts. Remember to click the Help button in Demo Mode for specific information for each particular callout. I'm Mark Spencer from Ripple Training. Thanks for watching.